can't remember whether it was two days ago or whatever. What did you want from the Lord? And one was um, walking on the water. Guess what? I checked that one. Whew. Lord, I'm as nervous as a cat on a hot tin roof. <sighs> anyway, Lord, this morning, when I got up, um, I got dressed and got ready and worshipped the Lord and was out in the front of our hotel and Andre wasn't there and Andre's always there, always before I come down, always. And I'm standing there and standing there and standing there and I didn't have a jacket on and I was very chilly and I'm saying, God, what is going on? What is this? And then I thought to myself, I better check my watch. And my watch said quarter after nine. And I thought, oh, he's supposed to pick me up at quarter after ten. Maybe my watch has stopped. So I went to the front desk and I said, excuse me, can you tell me what time it is? And they said, it's quarter after nine, ma'am. I went back up to my room. And I thought, this is very, very strange. 20 after 10, maybe, would be my MO. <laughs> but I'm wondering, I'm wondering if this is a prophetic statement. That what I'm going to bring to you this morning I really think we need to pay attention to because I think that our early was maybe a warning was maybe a exclamation mark. I had this dream two years ago on my birthday and I wasn't very well that weekend. John was away on a trip and I wasn't feeling very good Saturday night. And so I said to the Lord, which I don't do very often, but I said to him, Lord, if you want me to go to church in the morning, would you please wake me up? Because I'm not setting my alarm. And so I had this dream. And it was a powerful dream. And I'm going, oh my gosh. Lord, I have to write this dream down because I do not get a, a lot. I'm not a pro prolific dreamer that I remember my dreams that prolifically. And when I get this kind of a dream from the front, you know, that's this, whatever, I, I pay attention. And I thought, oh, I wonder what time it is. And so I looked at my watch and it was quarter to 10. Well, our church service starts at 10.30. We live half an hour away from the church. So I thought, well, I guess I've missed church. And I thought, I've got to get something. I've got to get my iPad. I've got to get something and write the stream down. And our bed is, a, is one of the higher beds. And, and so you kind of slide off the bed, you know, onto the floor. And... Um, as I slid off, my foot didn't quite touch the floor, but all of a sudden, I heard this audible voice of the Lord saying, Carol, get out of bed. 
get into the shower, wash your hair, put your makeup on, get dressed, get something to eat, and get down to the church immediately. All my excuses. Like that. Well, I'm telling you, you think the road runner runs fast. I'm in the car, and I still don't have this dream down. And I'm going, oh God, oh God, I, I you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little tacky, but not super tacky. And I know that somewhere on my phone I have a recorder, and so I'm driving, praying, Lord, please, if there's policemen here, I'm sorry. Anyway, I prayed that the policemen would not see me, that they would be blinded that day. I'm just being honest. Anyway, because I had to get to the church immediately. And we have a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of stoplights on the highway going down. And so I am fiddling with my phone, driving the car, praying that I wouldn't get trying to find my recorder. Anyway, so I finally find my recorder, so I felt better, so I'm driving and I'm recording this dream. And I only hit one red light on the way down. And how many would there be, like 20? 10? It seems like 20 when you're in a hurry. <laughs> anyway. I must count them one day because there's a gazillion of them, it seems like. Anyway, so I get rounding into the church and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I bet you my parking spot's not there. Where am I going to park? Sure enough, my parking spot was there. Zip, into the parking spot. I ran into the church and then thought, I wonder what time it is. And it, it was about five minutes, ten minutes after eleven. So, oh, okay. Now, um, where am I going to sit? I'll sit at the back. I thought, oh, no, I don't want to sit at the back. I thought, well, I'll, I'll sit where the worship team sits because there's always the seat there. So I started up under the flags in our church along the side to where the worship team sits. And, and the Lord spoke to me when I got to the aisle that would zip across to the main aisle to, to go where I usually sit. And, and the Lord said, Go and sit in your seat. I went, oh, but Lord, there'll be somebody in it. He said, then tell them to move. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> so I changed courses and rounded and, and I, I, don't, I don't know what my face looked like. By the time I rounded that corner to where I usually sit, but there were two people sitting where John and I usually sit. Now, I can say I don't know what this looked like, but they took one look at me and they jumped out of their seat and ran. <laughs> so I'm going, oh, thank you, Lord. I, and I still don't, to this day, know who they were. <laughs> anyway, I sat down. And I thought, oh, okay, great. I'm here. And then the realization struck me. Oh, my gosh, Lord. Are we doing the dream today? And he said, no. He said, not today, Carol. This was a test of your obedience. So I was kind of relieved. Well, then Sandra, our, our, our pastor said, um, Carol, you have something to share prophetically. Uh, why don't you come up to the front and share it? And so I started 
to go. And the Lord said, I don't want you to share it now. I mean, I have never had the Lord speak like that ever to me before, ever. I have heard the audible voice of Jesus when I got saved. Speaking out loud in my bathroom, the 23rd Psalm. That's how I got saved. But, but never like this. And so I'm going, oh, well, this is a relief. And he said, you can share it just kind of, just very, very little bit. And so anyway, I did. So a year later, a year and a half later, I'm preparing for a conference and the Lord said, I want you to share the dream. I said, okay, Lord. And and I felt that I'm to share the dream here because you have bleachers in the back of your church. So in the dream, <clears throat> I'm standing down there in front of our podium and we have a, a high thing like this and, and, and I'm worshiping and I'm praising God and I'm worshiping away, loving the Lord. The worship was great and I'm just there. And suddenly, I got caught up, caught up in a whirlwind. And I was inside the whirlwind. And I looked up and I thought, oh, Jesus, am I going through the roof of our church? And I went up to the ceiling of the church. And it stopped and came down again. Again, And we have our microphones right in front of the podium. And when I came down, it was like something came off of me. <coughs> and something came on me. It was like, ugh. And I grabbed the microphone and I said to the people, I said, there is another wave of this glory cloud coming. Joe. But I said, there's a great warning that's coming with this glory cloud. I said, with this glory cloud is coming the fear of the Lord. said this morning the Lord is giving us an opportunity to repent for secret sins he is giving us an opportunity where we have taken his grace for granted yeah Where you have believed in that teaching of hyper grace. 
He said, I am a forgiving God. But I know when people are using my grace for their own means and their own end. And then I noticed, I looked up and I saw that that glory cloud was beginning to come down. And I said to the people, if you want to repent, the mercy seat is at the front of the church. Come and repent. Come and get rid of those secret things. Come. And stop using that wonderful gift of grace to your own advantage. But I said, if you're not willing to do that, I said, run for your lives. Because if that glory cloud of the awesome reverence and fear of the Lord touches you, I fear for your lives. Because the Lord said, as we are pressing in, as we are saying, God, we want all that you have. We want to see your face. We want to be in that kind of presence. We want the dead to be raised. We want the blind to see and the lame to walk. And every disease. As John said the other night, the wonderful presence of the Lord that we have been experiencing for all these years is like training wheels. He has been getting us used to his presence, but he's going to up the power. And he is going to use each and every one of you in ways that you have never, 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 never dreamed possible. And that doesn't mean just the people that stand on the platform. That means everyone. Because we have much work to do before the soon coming of the Lord. And he said, I am a God of love. I am your father. But getting to know the reverence and the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It is not about taking my love away from you. And as that cloud came down in the dream, I saw people in our church scatter just scatter. Some ran forward and some ran out. And as the as the chaos happened in our church, I noticed that there were bleachers at the back. And I thought, God, we don't have bleachers in our church. What is this? And I saw two men sitting on the bleachers and they were dressed in very nice looking suits 
nice ties, white shirts. And they were sitting on the top rung. And they were sitting there mocking. Pointing. Their legs crossed. I can't do that. I'll fall over. Anyway, they had their legs crossed and they were mocking. And... And the Lord said, go over to them. So I walked down the center aisle toward them. And as I got close to them, maybe five feet, maybe maybe ten, I don't know, they both fell off the bleachers. And they were motionless on the ground. And I thought, oh, Jesus... Are they dead? And the Lord said, never mind them. He said, see that young man at the entranceway. He is running to the door and he's running back up and he's running back to the door and running back up. He said, I want you to go and talk to him. Because I have a word for him. So I went over to him and I said, sir, I said, the Lord has sent me to talk to you. You have been in secret sin with your secretary and the Lord has given you a great anointing in the past and his anointing is without repentance. That he has not withdrawn it. He's just put it on hold. But if you will truly repent and go to the front, he will restore you. He will heal you. And he will bring you into your calling and your destiny. But I said, if you walk out these church doors, I fear for your life. I fear that you are going to be turned into Lot's wife. And I woke up. I had never in my life had a dream like that before. And I have this is the third time I have shared this dream. But I felt and I argued with the Lord. I've brought two other messages with me. But I know there's such a grace on this church. There is such a favor. I was here two years ago when one of those glory clouds came in that was so beautiful with the gold dust. He loves you. He so loves this church. He so loves your hearts. But I felt from him and I've struggled all. All morning with this. To break this word to you. I really sense that he's going to be taking you into places that you've longed for in your hearts. 
that you've cried out for in your hearts. Our God is a loving God. Our God is a just God. He's a faithful God. He's a God full of majesty. He's a God full of grace. And I don't know you personally. I don't know. And I'm not saying that there is some of these things that I'm saying to you. I don't know. I just feel. And if I've missed it, I ask you to forgive me. But I'm too scared not to bring it to you. Because I so want you guys to go. I so want you to go so much higher. Please take us with you. And it is not about a holiness. Like the old days where it was a holiness, an outward holiness, a straight jacket of good behavior. It is not that at all. That is not what I'm saying. It is a holiness. <coughs> it is a holiness in your heart. It is a holiness and a reverence. Because God in these last days we may be getting into times of trouble with a debt load of I don't know what the highest 26 trillion dollars is We may be facing some hard times. I don't know. But I know that we need the awesome, reverent fear of the Lord. We need to obey his voice unquestionably. We need to learn that. I feel that the, the prophetic hour ahead this morning was giving you a heads up for the something that's coming that may not be happening tomorrow or the next day time with the Lord is never the way we think it is but I do know that when the Lord speaks, how many times has the Lord said, I want you to go and pray? And you'll say, yes, Lord, I'll do it when I come home. Lord, I want you to phone so-and-so. Yes, Lord, I'll do it later. They seem like trivial things. But they are training wheels. They are training wheels. And we need that awesome reverence of the Lord. That dream was, I wanted to see your obedience, whether you would obey me. And I think he's saying to all of us, I'm not excluding me. It's not if we make a mistake. It's not if we, we do something wrong that God is going to wipe you out. No. He is a loving father. He is a gracious father. He is a merciful father. But I think in these days that we're entering into, 
whether they be a year, two years, whatever it is, we need to learn to hear his voice and obey it immediately. I think that's how the Chinese church has made it through. I want to give us, let's stand. I want to give us an opportunity. Whatever you feel. I want us to look in the depths of our hearts. I want you to pray after me, Holy Spirit, if there be anything in my heart that displeases you, will you dig to the root of the, of the thing that displeases you? Because I want all that you have because your glory is coming the promises that you've given me are about to be fulfilled and I want to be pure I don't want to bring reproach to Jesus so Lord, look in my heart. I give you permission. It's going to take a minute as Jen sings. Coming like we have never experienced it and we want to be ready do you want to be ready put your hand up Lord I want to be ready and I will deal with my stuff so let's pray Lord I repent of every hidden thing that you have shown me 
anywhere that I have taken your grace and used it in a wrong way. I repent, Lord. I want to be an obedient child. Full of obedience, full of love, full of life. I want to do what you're saying to do. Lord, I ask you to help me. Put me on training wheels, Lord. Because I want to get ready. Because the greatest days of the church are at hand. The greatest days of the church are at hand, people.